This is a story that's beloved by so many. As you were bringing your version of Tate to the screen, what's one thing that you wanted to make sure translated from the page to the screen? And what's one thing new that you brought to him? Um, I mean, definitely uh, Tate's kindness, for sure. There's like a gentleness to him um, uh, that uh, is innate when you when you read about him in the book. Um, so just wanted to bring that that sense of, uh, you know, kindness and gentleness. And then um, I also wanted, uh, you know, there to be a little bit of a, I don't know, like a, he's not cookie cutter. He's not perfect. You know, he does make mistakes. And I, I wanted there to be an aspect uh, of that, especially when he leaves um, Kai and it doesn't come back on the 4th of July. I, I wanted him to, um, to not be just the good guy. You know, he needed to have these, these edges to him to make him human being. Um, and I'm grateful that Delia wrote that into the book as well is so special was there a moment while you were filming when you realized you were all were creating magic uh i mean even before we started filming there was uh you know the first time getting to go see kaya's shack and uh it was like ripped right out of the pages they did such a beautiful job recreating that um and then uh the very first day of filming uh for daisy and i was the in the book and um and like for us on set was the, the first time they meet as adults at the tree stump when they're um, handing feathers back and forth and kind of communicating through the tree stump by leaving each other gifts. So that was a really, really special day. Uh, it was uh, serendipitous that that was our, our first day of filming. As you've grown in your career, you've been more selective about the projects and characters that you go out for. What was it about Tate that you connected with? Um, I think there's a there's like a... a underlying sadness even though he's like a, a joyful character to him he, he has gone through uh, a lot in his life to get him to that point he loses his mom and his little sister in a car crash and he's you know raised by his dad um growing up I, there's a line um in there when scupper his father is is talking to him about what it means to be a man and he says uh a real man cries without shame reads poetry with his heart feels opera in his soul and does what's necessary to protect a woman and i just i really connected with with that little uh, uh chunk of dialogue and it said so much about who tate was as a character so i wanted to make sure that was sprinkled all throughout um, whenever you saw him on screen yeah, it was actually your sisters who told you how popular this <laughs> yeah. novel is. Did that bring any pressure as you headed into this project? Oh, it's funny. It's like, you know, I've never gotten, a, you know, a, a, any sort of interest from them on anything else I've done. And um, when they they were like, who are you playing, Chase or Tate? And they're very adamant that I answer them right in that moment. And I told them, Tate, they were so relieved. And I was like, if my sisters care this much about a book that I didn't even know they had read yet, um, I, I can't imagine how the rest of the world feels when millions of millions of people have gotten to uh, to read this book and fell in love with it. So there was a, a little bit of pressure there, but it's also wonderful to be a part of a project that so many people love. Um, mm -hmm. So it was cool, but it was also, you know, where was that support earlier, Lexi and Chelsea? Yeah. <laughs> This film is set in such a particular time period and location. Did that affect your character development process? What was that preparation like? Um, I mean, definitely like the the jobs were a little bit simpler, I think, in that in that place and time. Um, you know, Tate worked on a, his dad's shrimping boat with him. So it was like manual labor. And um, I think, uh, you know, as much as he loved that job and being out in nature, he wanted something more for himself. Um, and he dreamed of being a biologist. And when it came time uh, for him to decide what he wanted to do with his life, that's where him and Kaya kind of came came to a head. And he had to decide, do I want to stay out here in the marsh with Kaya forever? Or do I want to go follow my dreams of being a biologist kind of more towards the city? And um, when he leaves and, and doesn't come back for a while, I think that's when it hits him that no matter what job he has, it's never going to um, impact him the way Kaya has. And he comes to his mm. senses finally and, and comes back, um, albeit too late uh, in a way. Uh, he spends the rest of his life, I think, trying to make it up, whether he says it out loud or not, but trying to make it up to Kaya. Kaya, there's such a great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and Daisy. How were the two of you able to build that bond? What was that collaboration like as you brought this love story to life? She makes it so easy. I mean, she's, first of all, one of the funniest people I've ever met. Um, when we first did uh, chemistry, it's kind of, uh, you know, normally it's, it's pretty hard to figure out if you 
can connect with someone through a screen, but it was almost immediate. And then getting to see her on set for the first time uh, in person, like it was one of those, uh, those beautiful moments where we kind of run at each other from, from across the, across the room. And she jumped up on me, gave me a big hug. And I just knew we'd connect instantly. And then just the time, you know, we had a month of pre-production. So the time we got to spend together um, before filming, we did a, uh, uh, movement classes uh, with this movement coach Rie and we go on nature walks together we go kayaking in the bayou and um, we'd have you know movie night at her house almost every night and just uh, you know sip tea and talk into the late hours and um, it was like having a, a best friend on set that I got to work with which was super cool and uh, definitely probably gave Livy a headache at, at certain points because we'd just be giggling in between takes, you know, and we'd have to be separated and be reminded that we're here to make a movie. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was just great. I, I, I adore her. Yeah, the Marsh plays such an integral role in this story, and it's almost like a character in itself. Do you remember the first time you stepped onto set? What were you feeling as you took that all in? And how helpful was that as you prepared to step into Tate's shoes? I mean, the people that found these these sets, because it was all filmed on on location, which yeah. you know, played such an important role in our performances as well. We didn't have to imagine uh, what it must have felt like to be there. I mean, we were actually in these places that I had dreamed up when I read the book. Um, it was so important because the marsh is a character in itself to be out there in nature with, you know, the the cicadas and the, the, you know, the toads and the frogs uh, croaking and the rolling thunder in the distance and the air is like thick with the humidity and, um, you know, gorgeous sunsets and all this wildlife, you know, crawling all around you. The movie would not have been the same if we were on a sound stage. And I'm grateful that we were able to be out in these beautiful locations in Louisiana who uplifts other actors and what's unique about this project is that it highlights two unique timelines where we get to see younger versions of Kaya and Tate. Did you have the opportunity to share any words of wisdom with Luke who plays the younger version of your character? Yeah, um, I got I love that kid. He's he's worked more since this this project uh, than I think anybody has and it's amazing to um, you know him and his dad are so great. It's amazing to see their travels all around the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just told Luke to, to enjoy it. You know, there's going to be moments where you're on the highest highs and there's going to be moments where on the lowest lows, but, um, fall in love with the process is I think what I, I told him, um, cause, uh, there's going to be roadblocks and, um, and, uh, ecstatic moments, but just fall in love with the process and you'll, you'll go very, very far. He's very talented. You've also said in previous interviews that you're your own worst critic, then this is the first <laughs> time that you've watched one of your projects where you weren't nitpicking your choices. What was it about this cast, crew, story, filming experience brought, that brought out this performance in you? I think it was just, the whole process was magical. Um, and uh, it, it's, lightning really doesn't strike twice. Like I've, I've never, like you said, um, you know, seen a project and, and not uh, started focusing on myself and the choices I've made and, and kind of beat myself up about it. And I'd read the book and I was acting in the movie, but when I sat down to, to watch the film, I was just engrossed in it. And I, I felt like I was along for the ride. There's just something special about this book. And um, I think that's why so many millions of people read it and loved it. Um, I can't put a finger on it. It just has all these wonderful elements like this sweeping, you know, romance story and, um, you know, this coming of age story as well. And um, this murder mystery, it's, it has something for everybody. And I think that's why I really connected with it and um, got lost in the story when I saw a screening of it the first time. You're also somebody that takes something with them after each project. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned working on this project that you'll bring to, to future ones? Oh, man, God, there's a couple. I uh, Obviously, you know, each project's a collaboration, but this one was special because, it, you know, it was um, all the department heads were, were women, you know, and this is a story about, you know, female empowerment. And it was really cool to, um, you know, just show up every day and see these experts and masters in their craft all, all go ahead and come with different versions of, of the story that they read and bring them together in this beautiful, like, um, it's almost like a soup of, of artistry. Um, I think I just take away like picking the best people for the job to tell the story um, creates the best version of collaboration. Mm. And th there's so many moments that uh, readers are so excited to see brought to life on screen for the first time. Which was your favorite and why? Um, I think 
One of the most impactful moments for me was the first day of filming when we got to, you know, Kai and Tate got to meet, but there's a, um, a scene, uh, you know, towards the middle of the movie where, where Tate finally comes back and he, he, uh, you know, rides up on his boat and, um, he, he's there to, to say, I'm sorry to Kaya and he rolls up to her shack and Kaya's expecting somebody else to come. And they have this, this really heated exchange where he, he's, you know, trying to apologize for everything that he's done, but, um, realizes that the, he's just like everybody else. He abandoned her just like, you know, her family did. And, um, and it's heartbreaking for him knowing that if she decides to never take him back, that, that he has to be okay with that and, and that he understands why she wouldn't. Um, and uh, there's just something special about that scene. And it's, it's really emotional and, and kind of heartbreaking for both characters, but um, yeah, it was just a beautiful scene now that it's over, but in the middle of it, it was tough to film. Uh, and then Taylor Swift wrote an original song for, for this film. Where were you when you first heard it? And can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so funny enough, I don't know how they kept it a secret, but I didn't know about it until like, like same with Daisy, like right before the trailer came out. And um, then uh, I got to see a, a screening of the film at Sony and at the end of the, the movie, like after you've, the final moment, we find out what happened, the big twist. Uh, it fades to black and um, it's just this haunting melody starts playing and you're just melting in your seat and Taylor Swift's voice is perfect and uh, the, the instruments she chose and um, you know kind of like this smooth haunting melody of it um, it just encapsulates the feeling that you get once everything's settled in your in your heart from finishing the movie and um, I guess she chose instruments from that time frame uh, like from you know 1950s and 60s and um, only use those kind of instruments and all and also did it in one take like they would yeah. record music back then so it was cool to hear her process in that and that she also was a, a huge fan of the movie and um, read or huge fan of the book and read the book and wrote this really sweet letter to Livy and Reese saying hey um, it made such an impact on me I wrote this song I hope you guys like it and then I guess you know it ended up in the movie which is still bonkers to me that she was uh, she was so kind enough to do that. This isn't the first time that you've worked on a film that's being adapted from a popular book series. Did you take anything from working on Sharp Objects over to Where the Crawl Dot Sing? Um, yes, I mean, having the book uh, as like the, the Bible that you went back to every single day was incredible. Delia is this brilliant writer and um, there's such description, especially for each character. She, she fleshed them out so wonderfully that you didn't really have to ask too many questions. Mm -hmm. uh, to anybody else you could just go back to the book and see what she wrote and what um you know what uh what, what came to light from that and so we would just you know daisy and i would both have our, our books with us on set every day and um we would go back to them when, when we needed but uh it, it's really really nice having a piece of source material that you can just dive back to anytime you uh you hit a wall or you have a question or um you want to discover something new this film touches on so many timely themes like perseverance, discovering one's worth, being the hero in your own story. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? I think the resiliency um, of Kai's character is, is incredible. Um, right now, there's a lot of, you know, incredible, vast uh, you know, MCU universe and Marvel, uh, you know, does it so well. But um, most of the heroes that I look up to and, and the stories that I love are regular people doing extraordinary things. And um, Kai is a perfect example of that. She really is pushed down, ostracized by society, left by her family, and she continues to, to get back up and not only survive in this austere environment and, um, you know, Barkley Cove uh, pressing down on her and trying to, you know, put her away for life, if, if not take her life from her. And she continues to thrive in that. And um, it's really beautiful to see. And there's so many strange coincidences with this project from your, co your connection to Reese Witherspoon, who produced this film, and, and the Cruel Intentions pilot to, to, to Taylor Swift and her being your first concert. It feels like everything has led to this moment. When the film drops on July 15th, how are you planning on celebrating? Um, I'm going to go get some dinner with my good friends and uh, and just, I don't know, just just enjoy, uh, and enjoy it. And then um, obviously I'm going to take them out after to go see the movie. And I, I hope they love it as much as I did. And final question for you. When the film drops, what do you hope audiences take away after they see? Um, I, one, I think uh, 
Reese being, you know, our, our, the champion of the, um, of the book. And, you know, she was in it from the beginning. She had a manuscript before the book was even published. And so having her at the, at the helm and, and having her pick all these wonderful people and pieces to, to push this story together, it's such a loyal adaptation to the book. So people that really, really love the book are going to be very happy about the movie. Um, and then for people that haven't seen the movie, I'm, I'm excited for them to experience the, you know, the, the romance and the, um, the murder mystery and um, just this Taylor's uh, tale of survival. Um, so it's got something for everybody. And um, I'm just really, really excited for it to finally be out there. We worked really hard on it and I'm, I'm really proud of this film.